Ah, bă, e funny guy. <laughs> hey everybody, this is the new production channel Namto Sunauga. My name is Daniel, this is my mom Yana. Hi. We are from Russia, from Moscow. And uh, today we are gonna react uh, to another kind of video. Something new. Yes, uh, this is your request. Uh, geography now India. What is about? What is... Uh, who is this guy? <laughs> yes, and why we are watching uh, this video exactly? Because of request. Ah! I mm -hmm. said it already. <laughs> okay. I watched uh, the beginning of uh, this uh, kind of video about Russia and it was uh, like Russia is so big, so our story will be so big and uh, so big country. Okay, something else, please. It was funny and uh, maybe it will be funny. Maybe this uh, will be only education video. We don't know. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't done this yet. Put likes, write comments. Don't forget about notification bell. Three and a half million views, by the way. Two and a half million views. Three million views, two million uh, subscribers. Ah, it's oh, another. Really? <laughs> it's very, very, very popular video yes. as we see. Mm -hmm. uh, welcome to Geography Now. This is uh, the first and only YouTube channel that uh, actively attempts to cover profiles on every single country of the world. Mm -hmm. We're going to do them uh, alphabetically, so be patient if you are waiting for a one. Uh, that's uh, down the road. Okay, let's see. Yeah. So, we have finally encroached upon the giant India. Some of you have been waiting a long time for this episode. I'm just gonna say straight up, you all know India is incredibly complex and diverse. Even Indians have trouble understanding their own country. Obviously, I won't be able to scratch even the surface in this episode, but I'll try my best. A lot of you Indian geography peeps have helped me along the way, so thank you, and without further ado, let's begin. <laughs> let's begin. <laughs> I'm a very funny guy. It's big, it's loud, it's colorful, and most importantly, it has a plethora of confusing territorial anomalies that I just can't wait to cover. Here we go. There's an old saying, India is a place where everyone is in a hurry, but no one is ever on time. First of all, India is located in South Asia, right on the Indian and Arabian mm -hmm. Seas and the Bay of Bengal, bordered by six other countries, so close to seven, but that land bridge between Sri Lanka got wiped away like 600 years ago by a cyclone. India is divided into 29 states and seven union territories, with the capital New Delhi, which acts as its own administrative unit, located in the capital territory. Keep in mind, New Delhi is actually just the name of one of the districts in the capital territory, made up of 11. The largest city, however, is actually Mumbai, with Mumbai. New Delhi. Bangalore or Bengaluru and Hyderabad following after. However, the four busiest airports are Delhi Indira Gandhi International, Mumbai's Chhatrapati Shivaji International, <laughs> Bengaluru's Kempe Golda International, and Chennai International in the south. Ah, uh, you know why I'm smiling. This is my favorite part of any episode we ever make. Territorial <laughs> anomaly time. India is loaded with <laughs> 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 deliciously complex demarcation lines. First of all, what exactly is a union territory? In the mm -hmm. simplest way I can put this, union territories are places that are too distinct to be incorporated into a state but too small to have their own local governments. The first one, of course, is the Delhi National Capital Territory, where the capital lies. Chandigarh is a post-independent city Chandigarh. constructed to place Lahore as the capital of the Punjab area after it was split up between Punjab, Pakistan. Punjab. Then there Punjab. are the island mm -hmm. territories, the smallest one, Lakshadweep and the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The Andaman Islands being home to one of the last uncontacted people groups on the planet, the Sentinelese tribe, who have been hostile to visitors and are therefore left alone. As well as the Nicobar Islands, which actually used to be a short-lived colony of Denmark. Finally, the three remaining territories are former Europe European colony towns and ports. Dadra mm -hmm. and Nagar Haveli, Daman and Diu, which are separated by about 200 kilometers across the Gulf of Kambat, and the most confusing Union territory, the French-speaking Puducherry, which is actually split up between French speaking, yes, across it's India. It's really? mm -hmm. Mahe, Danamon, mm -hmm. it's and Pondicherry. Pondicherry is strange because it has I said about the uh, French language uh, in um, the Hindi, Hindi video. Here's an controversy. Look it up. Oh, and don't forget, here the Eastern states, also known as the Seven Sisters, are connected by this incredibly narrow 27 kilometer wide pathway known as the Siliguri Corridor. This pathway Siliguri. is like a crucial artery that completes the India puzzle. Or so you would think. India puzzle. Now, ah, so now in the China episode, I already talked so about the disputed the areas with India, such as Aksai Chin and Arunachal Pradesh. The latter pretty much just belonging to India as it's almost completely inhabited and operated by Indians. So let's move to the other disputes. Now, as of 2015, the Bangladesh episode is already outdated as India and Bangladesh have finally come to an agreement over the frighteningly complex former enclave exclave dispute. In the end, India only lost about 40 square kilometers of land to Bangladesh and now only a few enclaves and exclaves exist. Now let's head north. 
Now, when you try to draw the shape of India, you might want to be careful which depiction you use. Some might use this picture, some might use this, some might use this, and those that don't really study very well might use this. The point is, the whole area is like the most heavily <laughs> militarized, <laughs> diplomatically stressed out region on the planet. It's already had like four wars in the past half century. Basically, India, Pakistan, and to some extent China all want the entire area for themselves, although it's more of like a Pakistan-India thing. In the China mm -hmm. episode, we already discussed the Chinese disputes with India, so I won't cover those in this episode. If you want to learn more, just watch the China episode. But anyway, this entire area is a former domain known as the princely state of Jammu and Kashmir that was under royal Maharaja Kashmir. rulers all the way up until independence. Currently, this place is split up by this fenced-off militarized line known as the line of control between India and Pakistan. Why is this? Well, in the quickest way I can put this, okay, the British are out, we get to take your land. Uh, no, we want to be an independent princely state. Uh, we're supposed to take your land, and the majority of your people are Muslim, just like us, even though your ruler is Hindu as well. Hey, India? Yeah? If you help me, I'll let you secede my territory to your land with autonomy. Deal. <laughs> <laughs> Your problem now! I love how Mike played totally represents it. Oh, keep in mind, Pakistan's capital, Islamabad, is less than 80 kilometers away from all that drama. The line of control meanders through the mountains until it stops at a point called NJ9842. This is where things get really crazy, because from there you hit the Siachen Glacier, the second longest non-polar glacier in the world, and this is pretty much the dead man zone. After point NJ9842, you hit the actual ground position line, a series of military outposts that extend all the way to the Chinese border. That that means everything in this area is ground zero for the Indo-Pak tension. And you know, the crazy thing is there's actually literally so small towns of normal regular civilians living ah, in these da, 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 da. many of which just go about daily life, going to work and raising their families. Otherwise, they have a river dispute with Nepal and various river islands disputed with Bangladesh. Outside of all the dispute stuff, though, now. India not only has the world's second largest road network and three of the world's top ten megacities and their own space program, but they also have a copious abundance of landmarks and notable sites, way too many to list, but some of the ones that you guys the Indian geography have told me to mention include places like the abandoned Danush Kodi ghost city, Golconda Fort, the four pillars of Charminar, the Ajanta Buddhist art caves, the Alora monolithic ruins, Mandu fortress, the Golden Temple, which oh, means Golden mm. Temple, <laughs> Kalavantin Durg post, the ruins of Hampi, the ruins of Rajasthan, Shantarunjaya Hill, which is basically like a mecca for Jains, the temple of the Bodhi tree, Jan Mahal, Bangar Fort, mm -hmm. the most haunted place in India, Mahabat Makbara, and keep in mind, just like in China, you can find a great Просто как долго он репетировал в произношении некоторых, ну прям так как скороговорки говорит, но видно он такой, я это наконец-то сказал. First of all, I would like my English like his, because my English is so poor now. I didn't speak English about five or six years, and maybe uh, I can try to do something like this, but it's... <laughs> very very really funny very guy. Quickly. <laughs> very quickly. But um, can I ask you about, uh, you know, is it um, for children or for adult? I don't think that uh, it's uh, for children <laughs> because of uh, his uh, speed. Uh, Speech and uh, you, you cannot understand this if you are a child. Why so fast? I can't even remember. A lot of information, a lot, yeah, but, uh, a lot of um, places uh, which we know. New Delhi, Mumbai, Amritsar, no, Amritsar Punjab. And I, I, it reminds me a lot of films from mm -hmm. India. Wall of India in Rajasthan. There's also the Paritala Anjaneya Temple with the largest statue in India depicting Hanuman. And mm. over 150 acres, the Sri Rangan Ataswami Temple. The the temple Express, temple the yeah, and there's also that building with the stuff in the thing. <laughs> anyway, we can talk about India's bridge constructed down south. But what it lies on top of is even more fascinating. Now, don't make this mistake. I'm going to India. All I need are my sandals and sunscreen. Uh -huh. Oh, crap. Now, as the seventh largest country in land area, <laughs> India has a wide range of landscapes, climates, and elevations that all contrast from one corner to the other. First of all, let's talk about the north. India sits on the yes. Indian tectonic plate that essentially smashed into the Eurasian plate, which in return created the largest mountain range mm. in the world, the Himalayas. The force is so strong that it's estimated that the Himalayas grow about 2.4 inches or 6.1 centimeters every year. There's also where you can find Kachinchuan, the tallest mountain in mm -hmm. India, or the third in the world, right on the corner of Nepal. Keep your eye on these mountains. These are pretty much the source of most of India's major rivers that give 
light to the whole country. That's why India takes these mountains so seriously. You can also find the largest natural lake, Mular, up in the Jammu Kashmir area. Below the Himalayas, you reach the North Indian River Plain, sometimes referred to as the Indus Ganga. This is the most fertile part of India where the most important rivers like the Ganges and its tributaries flow. Heading a little south, you reach the Satpura and Vindhya ranges that pretty much divide North India from South India. On each side, you get the West and East Ghat Mountains, which in return creates this massive triangle thing called the Deccan Plateau. I don't remember. You understand, right? That's what I don't remember. It надо записывать. В России ты не все знаешь, все горы, не все реки. Проходили, конечно. In fact, in 2016, mm -hmm. they beat a world record by planting disputably 50 million trees in one day. They've also agreed to reforest about 12% of their country by 2030. The most heavily forested area being the seven sister states in East India. Now, one of the factors that contributes to this would be the fact that India has the lowest meat consumption in the world with the highest population percentage of vegetarians. No, oh, of course. Uh -huh. of are uh -huh. Because of uh, religion. By the way, in India, when buying groceries, this label means vegetarian and this one means not vegetarian. Nonetheless, the remainder of the population does typically eat some kind of animal. Animal protein, in the forms of seafood or chicken, but almost never chicken, beef or chicken, pork, chicken, unless very popular. Or Christian minorities mm -hmm. scattered throughout the West and East areas. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about the role of cattle, shall we? India has more cattle and livestock than anywhere else in the world at around 330 million. And it's interesting because since they have <laughs> Hindu traditions, the killing of cows is illegal in many of the states except for a few, mm -hmm. and each state has varying degrees of punishment for committing intentional cow slaughter. The cows are happy in this country. <laughs> Once a cow is too old to produce milk, it typically is released into the open to die mm -hmm. naturally. But in Muslim religions, maybe not. Depends on the religion. Some religious sects use them as sacrifices, but otherwise they are typically sold to the underground market for beef or hides. To this day, there are about. As far as as I understand, the most happy cow lives in India. One of the most in the world. Six times as many female cows as male cattle in India. So that means, yeah, something's happening to the males. Nonetheless, India does have the third highest carbon emission rate after China and the U.S. Mm -hmm. Fourth, if you consider the EU. However, emission per capita, they rank mm -hmm. pretty low at only about two kilotons per person. Oh, Contrast yeah. that with Qatar at about. It's There problem in the world. Mm -hmm. problem. Mm -hmm. Animal sanctuaries across the country where you can find some of the national animals like the peacock, the Ganges River dolphin, the cobra, mm. Indian elephant, you like the peacocks. highest population of Bengal tigers in the world. Which I like dolphin. the tigers. So you prefer tigers. And in we have a more tigers. <laughs> Products in like Russia. millet, bananas, lemons, limes, mangoes, ginger, chickpeas, milk, butter, fennel, jute, and about 75% of the world's blah, spices blah, 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 blah. come from India. Speaking blah, blah. of which, food! <laughs> Typically you can find the staples, roti, chapati, and food. Food is the style of pizza. Very good. I like it. More commonly commercialized Indian foods that I would like to subscribe on, on, on this channel. <laughs> yeah, okay, why not? My favorite Indian dish, palak paneer. Даже я это знаю, я не знаю почему. What is it? Это шпинат с сыром, по-моему, да? Вы можете попробовать это. Я люблю вас, но попробуйте Shashi Turur once said, "In India, we celebrate the commonality of major differences. We are a land of belonging rather than blood." First of all, India has a population of about 1.3 billion people and is the second most populous country in the world after China. Yeah, after after China. After China. About 72 percent of the country is Indo-Aryan and a quarter are Dravidian, and the majority of the remainder are Mongoloid, Asian, and other peoples. They also use the Indian language. They use the Type C, D, and M plug outlets, and they drive on the left side of the road. By the way, how on earth did he get to this point? А что он сказал? Я что-то пропустил. Три вида розеток, как бы они используют. Я и для разных кого? Ну для разных, ну как бы три типа, как бы да, вот людей и три типа розеток. А чтобы есть европейская розетка, еще какая-то, еще какая-то. Он сказал очень быстро. He said very quickly, but I don't understand difference between them. Как ты это то сюда приплел? Три идиота. Да, ты. Ну как он сюда я то еще приплел? Да, ну как? Как как коннекшн join कर रहे हो? Full connection है बाबा। Friday videos so I don't want to go to jail again.
keep in mind, those statistics that I just mentioned are incredibly generalized. Of the Indo-Aryan and Dravidian communities, there are about 2,000 different ethno-linguistic people groups in India with about 645 district indigenous tribes, 52 major ones. So obviously we can't cover them all, but what we do know is that the North is very different from the South. For one, mm -hmm. the North mostly speaks in languages that are all related to the Indo-Aryan branch, with languages like Hindi, Bengali, Punjabi, and Gujarati. Oh, the South most languages. A lot of them. Dravidian branch with languages like Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam, and Malayalam. Malayalam. <laughs> I'm sorry. What the fuck? Great question. All we need is nothing. Let's just uh, remove it back. It's like Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam, and Kannada. Kannada. <laughs> There's also pockets of Sino Tibetan and Austro Asiatic languages spoken in the far north and east. Wait, so how do they all like communicate? He's from Canada. He's from Latvia. Mom, but this is yeah, I have to just listen. What should I say? They all like communicate with each other. Great question. Yes. Although India does not have an official language, there are 22 recognized national languages, and of these, two are the most prevalent, taught in schools and used by government officials: Hindi and English. And very often, these two are like mixed mid-sentence. It's weird. Don't be surprised if you hear someone speaking Hindi and then mm -hmm. someone finishing off in English. It's like it's not a good speaker. It's worse. It's all like what this. And I was like trying to like, why are you trying to do that? I know, right? And the washing machine. I told them, but I said, "Get the Bob Saget with a chainsaw." Now, of course, let's discuss the one thing that goes hand in hand with India: Hinduism. About 80 percent of India. Claims to be Hindu or at least part of the Hindu practicing community. Now we don't have time to explain everything about the tenets and multi-layered philosophies and practices of Hinduism. If you want to know, just talk to a Hindu person. But basically, one thing you do need to know is that Hindu-driven ideologies pretty much dominate most of life in India, everything from family to business. You will see colorful, mesmerizing shrines, temples, statues, and rituals being performed everywhere, even in public. On the Bharat Mata, the mother of India, statues are everywhere. Like India. Mm -hmm. The largest Hindu pilgrimage, the Kumbh Mela, happens every three years, rotating between four cities, in which the Parents bathe in the Ganges <gasps> River and enjoy a massive festival with tens of millions of people. Uh, I mean, seriously, you can practically see it happening in some space. Now, a controversial topic in relation to Hinduism would be the caste system, which is basically a belief that people are born into a socioeconomic life that they are destined to serve into. Today, however, the system is more fluid and loose. У меня вопрос: почему мы ушли от географии? <laughs> Here a lot of information about India, not only geographic. Даже розетки приплел. Yeah. <laughs> it used to be from a long time ago, and thanks to economic reforms, anybody with enough drive can kind of move up the social ladder regardless of birth. Nonetheless, India is home to every major religion in the world, even a few Jews, including the Benai Menashe, an indigenous group that claimed to be one of the lost tribes of Israel. In fact, Judaism and Christianity actually had a head start in India way before it even kicked off in Europe. As tradition holds, Cochin, or Malabar Jews, migrated around 1000 BC to trade during the times of King Solomon, and in 5380, Thomas, the apostle of Jesus, arrived mm -hmm. in what is now the state of Kerala to establish the first church in India. Today, most Christians are found in the southwest and far east Seven Sisters regions. India also holds the highest population of Sikhs, Jains, and Zoroastrians, mostly found in the north, and the second largest Muslim population in the world after Indonesia. Most Muslims are populated around the northwest areas by Pakistan or in the east by Bangladesh. Oh, and don't forget the Buddhists. In fact, Buddhism actually started in India. Today, the Dalai Lama yes, even takes refuge from the in the state of Assam. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was a lot of information. Ah! Okay, so by the way, I agree with him a lot of information. <laughs> <laughs> but what exactly holds the country together? Well, for one, you kind of have to understand Indian history, which will take way too long to explain. But in the quickest way I can put it, Indus Valley, Maurya and Gupta empires, Southern empires, Golden Age, Middle Kingdoms, a ton of new religions come flocking in. Ooh. The North fell to the Delhi Sultanate. The South became the Vijayanagara Empire. It was like a fun allocation, yes. Yeah. 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 Direct British rule, nationalist movements, independence, ah, it was... economic liberalization in 1990. <laughs> Он, он изображен на деньгах. В каком-то фильме использовали эту локацию, то ли Бекузи. Скаджел, то ли еще какой-то фильм. Essentially, India used to be made up of around 500 smaller royal princely states, and when the British came in, they kind of exploited them to manage such a huge population. Although India is a democratic federal republic and the largest democracy in the world, the old royal families still exist today, and although they have no political power, they hold high positions of influence in their communities across India. So today, technically, you could meet someone that would be considered an Indian prince or princess. Plus, the biggest thing that really united Indians in the past two centuries would probably be their hatred of British rule. It was kind of like... Well, this is not cool. Yep. What do you say you and I work together in a end this thing? 
<laughs> one good thing you could say that came out of imperialism was that it kind of stopped all the internal squabbling and unified the groups towards one common goal, to get rid of imperialism. Today, Indians are just proud to be Indian. I mean, a Tamil soccer player can get cheered on by a Rajasthani, a Punjabi pop star can sell out tickets in Orissa. Speaking of which, all Indians love movies and music. India oh, has a of course. <laughs> in terms of volume, pumping out nearly 2,000 mm. films per year. Surprisingly, mm -hmm. Nigeria pumps out more. However, the box office revenues grossed out at only about $2 billion annually compared to Hollywood at over $10 billion. But still, it's impressive. And keep in mind, it's mm -hmm. not just Bollywood, but it's also Tollywood, Tollywood, Hollywood, 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 and so on. There's like yeah. 20 different Four. woods. Oh, and like every movie in India has at least one scene where everybody breaks out in song and there's almost always a happy ending. Unfortunately, mainstream media has also put an aesthetic strain on many of the people as it's almost become an obsession to be light or fair-skinned, causing people to go so far as to buy skin-bleaching products. Some other controversies include things like illiteracy being an issue in many parts of the country, especially in the rural areas, but I mean, come on, when your country has literally hundreds of different writing systems, go figure, I mean, give them a break. Also, <laughs> you guys, the Indian geography groups have asked me to bring awareness to the fact that India does unfortunately have some of the highest rates of human trafficking and child slavery. The government is trying to crack down and culture is slowly being reformed, but for now, it's a sad reality that still does exist. Hey, you're a GN, we talk about the good and the bad, I'm just saying. Otherwise, sports do definitely tie everyone together as well, especially cricket, the national sport, even though they also... Check the day, check the day, India, also India, 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 India,
much this uh, guy, especially because he is very fun, very expressive. His style of uh, speech. И мне очень понравилось то, что он вставляет Discussion. мультфильмы. Вот эти вот хлоп-хлоп, анимейшн, a lot of animation. Очень быстрая речь, это, конечно, немного мешает, потому что в итоге вот сейчас каша в голове. Если бы мы вообще ничего не знали про Индию, мы вообще сейчас ничего вот не запомнили, наверное. Потому что, так, история, география, э, религия, что еще там? А, разве что про флаг не сказал. Ну, кстати, есть про флаг отдельная. Mm -hmm. А так, да, и про Болливуд сказал, и про это сказал. Стоп, 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 стоп. Географи now. <laughs> why history? Why religion? Why? But uh, it was interesting and uh, it is uh, 19 minutes, but uh, it's like five minutes maximum. Yes, really. Я поняла, почему он хотел, вот, почему вот столько всего он сказал, потому что он хотел сказать, что потом... Very huge country, очень большая страна, столько всего, религии, вот это, 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 штатов, трам -па 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 -пам. языков, трам -па 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 -пам. и это добавляет экспрессии и добавляет действительно вот это вот ощущение того, что страна реально очень большая, потому что столько туда всего понапихано, мне очень понравилось. Мне кажется, он про маленькие страны тоже так долго рассказывает. Я хочу подписаться на его канал, посмотреть и поставить лайк от всего сердца, потому что это действительно очень интересно, очень легко Про Бангладеш есть, кстати. Давай мы как-нибудь про Бангладеш прореагируем, это, мне кажется, будет очень интересно. If you want, we can react to Russian video about Russia. He speaks about Russia. Yes, yes. А у меня много чего как раз осталось. Вот. Да, осталось Он много. Да. Ну просто это надо подает, переварить. Немножко. Да, передает информацию. Интересно Давай. и хочется посмотреть еще раз и нажать несколько раз на паузы и немножко уложить. И поставить лайк, and put like to put this like video, on this video, and uh, put like to our video, our yes. reaction. Please write comments. Uh, what do you think about this video? Don't forget about notification bell. And if you not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to this channel, Daniel Production. And uh, you will see a lot of reactions of uh, Bollywood, Hollywood, and uh, also <laughs> other India videos like this and other type of videos. Uh, also Hindi lessons. I'm learning Hindi and uh, it, it's very funny. Thank you for recommending this video. Thank yes. you for this request. Uh, so, namaste. Hanghera hikyarike. Tien milingi chalte chalte.